The sky isn't falling, but a major company's value is. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. No matter where you fall in terms of belief, ideology, or worldview, you've definitely heard about the Bud Light controversy. This is the story. On April 2nd, Dylan Mulvaney posted a video on Instagram that explained Bud Light had sent a personalized can to commemorate 365 days of being a girl. This post caused outrage across the internet as news spread. People expressed their displeasure with Bud's decision, which caused the value of the company to drop. While the value of a company can rebound, public perception will take longer because alienating the audience is the costliest mistake a company can make. It goes beyond the current Bud Light situation. There have been numerous marketing fails that consumers still talk about. They range from the inoffensive like New Coke to ones that cause bigger problems like Coke's rival, Pepsi, and their campaign featuring Kylie Jenner. The problem stems from companies getting involved in things entirely unrelated to their brand. This often confuses an audience. Marketing with a murky message hurts brand identity, but marketing in a way that's antithetical to brand identity has much longer lasting negative effects. In regards to the Bud Light situation, a spokesperson for Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light's parent company, told Newsweek that the company works with hundreds of influencers across brands as one of many ways to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics. In an interview with the Make Yourself at Home podcast that has gone viral on Twitter, Bud Light president Alyssa Heinrichshide says that she had a super clear mandate when joining Bud Light to rehabilitate the fratty and out-of-touch image of America's best-selling beer to attract younger drinkers. This statement confused some as the phrase America's best-selling beer denotes brand success. According to Heinrichshide, one in five Gen Z adults identify as LGBT, according to Gallup. Bud Light has heretofore been associated with frat parties and football, not transgender rights. The interview aired just days before a firestorm erupted over Dylan Mulvaney's Bud Light promotion posted on Instagram. I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bud Light, and it was. This brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. However, that is not entirely accurate. According to data from Macro Trends, Bud Light has been on an incline since before Heinerscheid joined the company. As the data shows, Bud Light started to grow again in 2021. She's been with the company for less than a year, but her directive has hurt the company. Demographics are incredibly important for business. Heinerscheid wanted to sell Bud Light to Gen Z, but Gen Z didn't want Bud Light in the first place. To get a clearer picture of Gen Z drinking trends and their influence on the alcohol landscape, the website The Numerator blended a mix of insight, true view data, and survey responses from Gen Z panelists. Overall, alcohol is less appealing to Gen Z consumers. Only 84% of Gen Z shoppers are buying alcohol compared to 90% of millennials, a significant six point difference. And while Gen Z also spends less than millennials on non-alcoholic beverages, the gap between the consumer group is greater with alcohol purchases, indicating this is an alcohol specific trend. Gen Z favors hard beverages, champagne, and drinks with little or no alcohol over wine and beer. And a higher percentage of Gen Z dollars are spent on sweeter spirits like cognac, flavored malt beverages, cordials, and blush wine. This data was readily available to Bud Light. Knowing that the demographic doesn't consume your product in the first place is an indicator that marketing to them should be done very carefully as not to alienate the core consumer base. Consumers support brands that line up with their beliefs. The backlash towards Anheuser-Busch indicates that the consumer base doesn't line up with the marketing department. Ms. Heinerscheid says, we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. What does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and men. And representation is at the heart of evolution. Data shows that inclusivity is important to consumers, but not necessarily the Bud Light demographic. What Bud Light is trying to use is called representation marketing. Research shows that consumers do care about inclusion, but that number increases the higher the median income goes. Who is the primary Bud Light audience? Young men, a demographic with less expendable income. Over 60% of Bud Light drinkers are men. The brand identity is a sports beer, a party beer, a fratty beer, a blue collar beer for the working man, a cheap beer for when you're low on cash. That's Bud Light's identity and demographic. And some people stick with Bud Light for life. No matter one's opinions on the matter, the result is the same for Bud Light, massive losses. Anheuser-Busch saw its value plummet more than $6 billion since the company announced its branding partnership with controversial transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Since March 31st, shares of Bud Light's parent company have fallen by nearly 4%, knocking down the company's market value capitalization from $132 billion to $127 billion. Anheuser-Busch stock fizzled more than 1.5% on Wednesday. Mulvaney had posted videos and photos on social media promoting the sponsorship deal with Bud Light, which produced specifically made cans with Mulvaney's likeness to commemorate the partnership. The Mulvaney endorsement deal prompted Kid Rock to shoot up several cans of Bud Light with an assault rifle. The backlash even prompted local Missouri distributors to cancel an appearance by the famous Budweiser Clydesdale horses due to fears for safety of the staffers. Industry experts told the New York Post on Tuesday that the controversy appears to stay in power and could lead to a full-blown boycott of Anheuser-Busch products. 
Mulvaney reportedly is pulling down more than $1 million in sponsorship deals with several big name brands including Nike and Kate Spade. The numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for Bud Light sales. Bud Light appeals to a certain demographic and it's a business's job to serve that demographic, not teach them a lesson. Now consumers are teaching them a costly lesson. Data showed that Bud Light was on the rise and with successful ad campaigns like Bud Nights and the Dilly Dilly slogan still fresh in consumers' minds, why go down a path that will only divide consumers and hurt sales? People don't forget, and based on the response from consumers, they won't be forgetting this decision for a long time. The real reason I wanted to make this video is because I went to college for advertising and marketing and communications, and I have a degree in all these things, and the first thing I thought when I saw the Bud Light advertisement, or post on Twitter, or whatever it was, as I thought to myself, this isn't going to land well because this doesn't line up with the Bud Light demographic. And that doesn't mean that people that drink Bud Light are bigoted people that don't like people of different views or anything like that. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. But to me, this is like trying to sell gangster rap to Christian people or trying to sell porn to Mormons. You get what I'm trying to say? It just doesn't go with the type of people that buy the product. And it comes from the fact that the people that work at these companies really shouldn't work at these companies. Again, I will reiterate this point ad nauseum. I understand that a company wants to grow and make money, but it doesn't work like this. It, I can show you every example. When you try to get overly political and you try to get involved with people or a group of people that don't necessarily drink the product or line up with the people that do buy the product, it never works out. It's not about bigotry. It's not about hatred. It's just about square peg, round hole. It's not gonna work. And I wish companies would understand that because they get on their moral high horse. They wanna talk down to everybody. They wanna act like these people that are displeased are terrible racist bigots and all this stuff. Look, I'm sure there are some people out there that feel that way about this stuff. But it's not Bud Light, a beverage producing company, to worry about those things. It's their goal to sell as much beer as possible and get it out there as quickly as possible. The marketing department is supposed to sell Bud Light to as many people possible and make it more palatable. Going this direction with Dylan Mulvaney has turned off a lot of people, billions of dollars in value lost. I've heard about bars in my area that don't serve Bud Light currently because of all of this. This is because they went down a path that doesn't line up with the Bud Light consumer fan base. People on Twitter want to act like it's a reflection of America's bigotry. I think this is a reflection of America's stupidity, corporate America's stupidity, think, think, thinking that it knows better than its consumer base, thinking that it can tell you what you want. No, remember folks, you are in control of everything. You have the power. If you don't buy it, they can't sell it, and then they can't make more. And so if Bud Light continues to lose its value and doesn't rebound from this, they will never go down the path of trying to be political, progressive, or any of these things. Michael Jordan said it best. Republicans buy sneakers too. And now Michael Jordan's statement has a lot of history behind it, so you can check that out for context, but I understand where he's coming from. Everyone is a potential consumer. Everyone is a potential customer. Treat everyone with respect and don't do stuff to anger anyone. Believe me, I'm in business myself. I know what's up. And it goes deeper than Bud Light trying to use this person as a spokesperson for beer. It's like when Disney puts same-sex kisses in their films for kids. There's no problem with same-sex relationships. Cool, go get married, have a life, be happy. But when you're trying to sell a kid's movie, which is family entertainment, it's subjective what each family is going to find acceptable. And then on top of that, when you try to take your product globally, you have to make edits or you can't sell it. That's what's been happening with Disney. They want to really double down on their political ideology and their entertainment and less and less people want to go support it. That's why the Super Mario movie was such a big hit. It's free of all of that. People have been trying to find wokeness in that movie, but there is none. It's just a good movie that appeals to everybody. And if more products and movies and TV shows try to be like the Mario movie, meaning we're going to do this by the book for the fans, make them happy and collect a check, that's all there is to do. The lady at Bud Light needs to follow the Super Mario method. The Super Mario model should be used in marketing going forward. What it is is appeal to nostalgia, appeal to kids, appeal to everybody, make toys, make video games, make money. Bud Light should have not gotten involved with this. This was a losing battle from the start. I hope other companies take note of this. The people that champion this the hardest are the people that have no stake in the matter. The outsiders, the outliers, the people who just want to comment on the situation. But if they were not buying Bud Light in the first place, does their view actually matter? I understand everyone's opinion has value, but it really doesn't, depending on what you're actually talking about. Does my opinion on the flavor of Bud Light really matter when I buy less than one can a year? No, not really. But if Jack down the street is drinking a case a week, well, I think the Bud Light should listen to him a little more. That's how I feel about all business. They should listen to the actual customer base. But the internet has given everyone a voice, and it seems like everyone's actually a consumer, but they're not. Not the case. 
and it doesn't really bode well for anyone. Dylan Mulvaney, Bud Light, the Bud Light consumers, the people that are being called certain things, the people that are calling those people certain things. Nobody wins. This is just one big ugly situation. And at the end of the day, everyone is worse off. So folks, thank you for watching. Like I said, this is a little different. But again, this is what I studied in school and it caused me to raise an eyebrow. So folks, I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, and do the one thing that this channel actually believes. Always be excellent to each other. No matter what shitty beer you drink, no matter what good beer you drink, no matter what you do, no matter who you sleep with, just be excellent to each other. But if you're Bud Light, I really don't care. You did this to yourself. I hope the hole in your foot's worth it. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no. They're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine, and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS, and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff, so if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of World Class Bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.